You know, outside of last night, Minnesota and Denver playing for a one seed. Yes. I find the last three weeks of the regular season to be terrible. I think it's because your sport and my sport suffer from the same exact problem. They do. And you can see it and you can feel it and you see it who's playing and who's not playing. It just is like, can this season be done? Can we just get to the playoffs already? Yeah, I just went through this. I was watching the night before I turned on Milwaukee Boston in the game that Giannis got hurt because I'm like, hey, it's a big one versus two in the East. Could be a conference finals matchup. Giannis ended up getting hurt. And then as the game went on, I started thinking to myself, Boston has nothing to play for. Nothing. They didn't seem interested. They didn't no. care. They were just jacking up the shots. Zinger didn't even play in no, it. No, some of their guys are sitting, and I'm like, why, why, why am I wasting my time watching this right now? By the way, shout out former Trailblazer great Drew Holiday. Huh? Yeah. What a deal he got. Blazer legend. They kind of had to give him that contract. What, four years, 135? What did he get? So, uh, yeah, four years, 135. Four, 135? Yeah. That's a good deal. He's a good piece for him. He really is. I'm this I can't wait to see them in the playoffs this year, man. Well, me either, but this is kind of my point. Like, I think you can make arguments, real arguments, that the NBA playoffs are going to be great, mm -hmm. but a dud. Oh. Because right now, if I was to tell you who to bet in an NBA Finals matchup, I don't believe, barring injury, of course, I don't believe you'd take any other teams except Denver and Boston. Denver most certainly, if I'm none, gambling on the West. None of the other teams in the East, and I'm including our Milwaukee Bucks in this, have shown that they have an ability to be better than that Boston team this no. year. But this is the one thing at least the NBA has going for it in the current structure, and that is if I would have asked you a year ago, are you taking the Miami Heat to win the East, you would have laughed at me. I would have laughed at right? you. No chance in hell they might not even get into the playoffs or in the play-in situation. Now, is that likely going to happen again in this league? No. Odds tell us and history tells us that is the absolute outlier. And you are well, way more plugged in than I am. There's still something about Milwaukee to me that I, I would not want to play them in the playoffs. Now, that is all contingent upon Giannis being healthy. But he is just he is such a freak of nature. And there's an aspect of them this year where there's been a feel-out process. Coach gets fired, what, 20 games into the season? New coach comes in. Guys have been in and out of the lineup. I mean, this Boston core, outside of what, Porzingis and Holiday, has largely been together now for however many years. And so there wasn't a huge learning curve for them, whereas I think there was more so for Milwaukee. And them in the playoffs would still, if Giannis is healthy, would still terrify me because of the core that they have. But the coach has not been good. No, historically, he's terrible in the playoffs. Giannis has a calf strain. We'll have to see what the you know, he's obviously not going to play the rest of this regular season, may miss a game or two in the first round. I think a lot of the, it would be great for them to get an easy first round matchup where you don't have to, you don't feel like you have to rush him back. Three they might games get Philly. And, they and, could get Philly. And, yeah. and I, if Giannis is not healthy, Philly can beat them. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just based on when you go to plus minus of, of five man lineups, do you know Milwaukee is actually the best? They just haven't been healthy enough for people to, really put them in this category. Right, and that's why and I And their be bench sucks. Yeah, right. Their bench is terrible. <laughs> it's not very good. But the starting five is there with everybody in the league. So, I I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. You're not wrong because a year ago we were all laughing at the idea of Miami winning a round, let alone getting to the finals, and, and then, like, yeah. eventually we knew that was going to end. And Boston was the number one seed who seemed like they had gone to the finals the year before. They're set up again. It just feels different with Holiday and Chris Stapps Porzingis, who is – Stayed relatively healthy to what his career's been. And yeah. Holiday having your, what, fourth, fifth guy most nights, but he gets to guard the other team's most, you know, potent wing player. Yeah, it was a huge move for that's them. A, that's a massive deal. And so everything the history of Boston has said, it, choke art is probably a little extreme, but uh, coming up short. Yes. I just think that they're built differently this year, and I think they've shown that through the regular season. I don't trust Doc Rivers. I have no idea about Giannis. <laughs> and outside of that team, are you picking the Knicks? No. You're picking Embiid, Miami again? No. Like, I just— Nobody else in the East would scare me. Okay, so if you're to that, you're already to that in the West. This is kind of my point. I think the first two rounds of the playoffs can be good, but I, I think ultimately it's going to be chalky and may end up being a dud for many, even though I think Denver and Boston in the finals is fantastic. Well, and that's what I would say. Like, I, I do think on the Boston angle, there is something to having the coming up short hang over your head. And there's just a different level of pressure on them. They understand. They're, they're similar 
not exactly the same, but it's kind of what the Dodgers are going to feel this year in baseball. Like, if the Dodgers don't win the World Series, anything short of that is a failure for them. The Boston Celtics, if they don't get to an NBA Finals, that is a failure of a season for them because of what they built, because of what they did in the offseason. You mentioned the guys that they brought in. Like, they're they're 35-3 and at home this year. They are the most dominant team in the league. They have been the most dominant team all year. Like, you find yourself down 3-1 to one in the second round randomly, that's a different level of pressure than just saying, hey, we we thought maybe we could win coming into the season. But I think the, the end of that argument is, and this is what I was hoping for with the NCAA tournament, although Monday's title game I thought was an absolute snoozer outside of the first 10 minutes or so, was that I'm okay with getting a great matchup at the end. Last year's NBA Finals sucked. Like, we all knew Miami had no chance at winning that series. They were an eight seed. It came out of nowhere. You're like, oh, my God. And then they got swept. And it just was over before it even began. So even if along the way it's a little duddy, you'll get some of these good, like, 3-6 matchups that are, like, surprisingly fun series. Clippers-Mavs. Clippers-Mavs. Clippers-Mavs would be great. That's the yep. best first-round matchup in the playoffs. It'd be yep. awesome. Point blank. So I, I, you might get some duds outside of those, but if it ends up creating an NBA Finals that it is Boston and Denver, I'm all for it because that, to me, is one of the better NBA Finals that we've had in a while. Um. Denver taking care of business last night. Both teams, I believe, were on back-to-backs. Minnesota. It was a good game until the fourth quarter, and then Jokic yeah. just put the hammer down. And so the question will be for Minnesota if they can get Carl Anthony Towns back, and he's been practicing. They're going to try to let him play one of the last two regular season games, if not both. So he's got something under his belt before they go into the playoffs. And then will that be enough? Will that that be the extra juice offensively for the Timberwolves? So Anthony Edwards doesn't have to score forty five a night, even though he might. Um, as well as a second big, so Gobert doesn't get caught. If Gobert had to come out beyond the free throw line, get caught in a pick and roll, Jokic picked him apart. Uh, the two best defenders in the NBA, Jokic has scored forty one and forty two on him. Wimby <laughs> and Gobert. <laughs> I saw Gobert yesterday. He's like a minus 4,000 to win Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, I mean, he's going to win it, but Wimby's (laughs) Wimby's should be right there. Can we normalize taking that away from just tall people? Uh, No, because you impact the game. I know. That's just dumb. Like, he's just, he's a good defender because he's tall. Very lengthy. Very, like, come on. But then you watch Jokic do that to him, and you're like, well, I guess you Right. Was like, if, like, is Drew Holiday a better, like, what he has to do to guard on the perimeter, to chase Steph Curry around? Like, that to me is more impressive than, I'm going to stand in and around the rim, and I'm going to put my hands up, and I'm going to block your shots because I'm eight feet tall. I was more upset that Holiday's not going to have a deep point in his life, but Marcus Smart is. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Holiday has done things that I've just been yeah. floored watching We saw him, him do defense. it to our team. Oh my god. Which is a lingering storyline in the Eastern Conference playoffs if they end up playing. Who? Oh, Damon. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, yeah. We all remember that New Orleans yeah. series. How did that go? Well, and then if it's not Drew, it's going to be Jalen Brown. Like, yeah. good luck, Damian Lillard. I'm rooting for you, but damn, that's going to be a really difficult thing. I... I'm trying to be uh, open-minded to it because, as you mentioned, Miami. I just don't see a team in the West. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. I, I just don't see it at all. And you know, the unfortunate thing is how special this Denver thing could be. And last night, Kevin Hart's doing an alternate broadcast to that game. Mm-hmm. And he has Cedric the Entertainer on. It's kind of like a Manning cast, basically. And they both are just talking about how bad it's for how bad it is for the league for Jokic to win another MVP. And I'm like, <laughs> who cares? What? I know, I'm so over that it's debate. It's bad for the league? What are you talking about? He is the modern era Tim Duncan. They're identical. They're just, they're boring. There's no personality. He's at least There's in no... commercials <laughs> making funny little I see, jokes. I don't think he's boring. I just don't think he translates well. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a smidge Duncan of a didn't language give you barrier. Anything? Yeah. I mean, what does Jokic give you? He's in a, he's in a funny commercial with uh, Peyton Watson. I'm sure Tim Duncan did. He's some pretty funny dry, he did but shit there's commercials early. yes, I remember yeah. those. But yeah. some of his post game interviews or whatever. I remember one he did something on his birthday, mm-hmm. and they asked him, you know, what his teammates got him, and he just he's like nothing. That what <laughs> where, and he made a dry <laughs> remark about no, that didn't get me anything or stuff, and he was he was half joking. About about it. That man out loud said, I don't even know where my MVP is. <laughs> yeah. I know. He, it was he, in the arena somewhere. He won the NBA Finals last year and did the on-court interview and was like, can I go home now? <laughs> like, that was his quote. Like, 
Not I'm going to Disney World. This is the best moment of my well, life. But yeah, but he's making fun of that in one of the hotel commercials. <laughs> yes. He's like, that is the uh, well, I haven't seen go any of back those to sort of be a fun. You haven't seen those commercials? I haven't seen it's any of them. It's hilarious. I, he's actually sneaky good. I, they him. probably only air him during NBA games, and I have not yeah. watched a lot of NBA. Oh, basketball. you didn't watch last night? Uh, no, I did not watch last night. I was building a crib. My, my child is, you. is now too big for his bassinet, so I had to build a crib all I evening. took in the whole double header <laughs> there on, uh, on the old Espen. I had Mavs Heat on. I had on, I was doing, I was cooking, I was doing laundry during yeah. that. I would check in. I was like, eh, Miami's not I had be a feeling Miami. Miami was going to get smoked by them. Yep. I'll say this, though, about the West. I hope I hope this ends up being right. I agree more with your line of thinking. What year was it that Dallas went to the conference finals? Is that like three years ago that Luka made it there? Um, Give or take. Two two years ago? So that was one of those stories that kind of, you know, I don't remember exactly where they were seated going into the playoffs, but they having Luka Doncic gave them an opportunity to get there because he's so damn good. That's the one thing about OKC in Minnesota. Like, OKC, I get the fear of them not having size, and that's probably going to be their downfall. They were a four seed that year because that seed. was the Phoenix 64-18 and 18 season. That's so they right. beat the Jazz in round one. And they got Phoenix in round two. And knocked off Phoenix in round two. But Oklahoma City having Shea Gilgis and Minnesota having Ann Edwards. Like, you have bona fide MVP candidates on those teams. And I've said this before. Like, you had those years where, like, random Utah teams would be a top two seed, but they didn't have a dude. And you knew that there was no chance they were going to win in the playoffs because you get to the second round and you're just a collective. And if two guys of your collective have an off night, you're totally screwed. OKC and Minnesota having, like, tier one first-team All-NBA MVP candidates – I'm not willing to gamble on it. I tend to be more of your line of thinking, but I'm wondering maybe if there's a surprise there because this is the Ant Edwards coming out party. And he comes out in the playoffs and he averages 38 points per game and he's dominant. You're like, look at that. Minnesota's in the Western Conference Finals. It's the best bet. That's your best hope, I think, to make it a little more interesting. But round one should be good, and then you start to kind of see it dwindle down, and yeah. I think we're going to get Boston-Denver. The pressure of round one is fun. The, the Suns, if they even get there, the Clippers and what they're facing, the Mavs, for as fun of this, as the story's been, can they win with Kyrie? Golden State, what if they don't even get to the play-in? Like, There's a lot of pressure in round one right out of the gate. 